Hello class, this is Tim Tomlanovich. Hope you're still doing well. Um, this is another lecture for you. Uh, this will be learning plan two. We're still in learning plan two and we're talking about non non-concurrent forces. Okay, so what have we learned so far in this class? So, so far what we've learned we know there are forces on buildings. So we know a force has a magnitude. It has a sense. It has a line of action. And a point of application. Okay, so, okay, let's just say this is a wall. Okay, so, with that, all right, so, knowing our, this, the sense is the arrowhead, so our sense is pointing to the east. Our line of action is zero degrees from Fahrenheit, or <laughs> temperature, zero degrees from the x-axis, okay? Remember the line of action is the arrowhead shaft, okay? Magnitude, so I need a magnitude on here, right? So that magnitude, let's just say it's 100 pounds, okay? And my point of application is right there on that wall, a certain distance on the wall. So we have a magnitude, a sense, a line of action and a point of application okay so now that's what forces are made of so typically it's the weight of materials in residential construction okay so now what do we have we now if we have a force that's acting at an angle what we need to do using trigonometry okay is we need to use trigonometry and use x squared plus y squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem, or fx equals the cosine of theta times f, because remember, the green will be f. This is fx. This is fy. So remember, we can create, remember, you just create it as a triangle, okay? So this is also Fy and Fx. And then Fy equals the sine of theta times the hypotenuse, okay? All right, so knowing that, okay, now what well, the last thing I just talked about was was a moment okay remember a moment is a force times a perpendicular distance from the line of action okay oops sorry about that so force times this times a perpendicular distance from the line of action number the line of action okay so force the magnitude times the distance okay so so now we're going to move on and continue with with this okay so now we're going to talk about resultants of parallel forces systems it's called a non-concurrent force systems remember what a non-concurrent force system is a concurrent force system, remember the lines of actions intersect at a common point. A non-concurrent force system means that the lines of action do not intersect at a common point. Okay, As you can see here, this is typically what we're dealing with in residential construction. So we can, right here, let's just assume this is a wall here, this is a wall there, and let's say we have a a wall he sitting here, a wall sitting here, and a wall sitting here. And that's putting a force, F1, F2, F3, on this 
this floor joist or beam. Okay, so if we sum all the moments about point O, so basically force one is going this way and this way and this way. So they're all clockwise moments, right? So let's go back to this. Remember, counterclockwise moment is a positive moment. So if I if I sum the moments right here, F1 times X1 plus F2 times X2 plus F3 times X3, if I know all these distances, that will be equivalent to this big R times X bar. So R equals the sum of the forces times Y. So that's F1 plus F2 plus F3. So R equals that. Okay, let me erase this here. So reason, so R equals the sum of F1, F2, and F3. Okay, so if we take R times a distance rotating about the same point, that will equal the same as summing the, moment, uh, the individual moments F1 times X, F2 times X, F3 times X. Okay, why do we want to do that? So is sometimes it's easier for us to deal with one resultant force because we need to know that one resultant force. So we need that magnitude, we need the sense, we need the line of action and the point of application so we can design that beam. And that'll be in structural analysis too. So this makes life a little bit easier for us, you know, when we're designing, we're designing things, okay? So how do we find, the key to this is how do we find X bar? So if, if you look at this equation right here, x bar equals the sum of the moments. So if you look at this equation, equals r times x bar. So if I rearrange this equation, divide both sides by r, I can solve for x bar. Okay. So this is, this, these are non-concurrent forces because their line of actions do not intersect at a common point. So there's several other non-concurrent forces, but this is the most typical case um, scenario that you will be running into in residential design. Okay, the line of actions do not intersect at a common point. Okay, so this is right out of your textbook. So I like this this diagram here. So here's a wall. Here's a girder. See, we have. A parallel force here and a parallel force here. So basically we need to design this girder but we need to figure out the forces on there. Okay so this turns into this. Okay they call this a free body diagram and we'll talk about these soon. What this, what this is represented. These are representing this right there. Okay, we have to mimic what's going on here. So here's here's A, here's B. So so you can kind of see. I just want you to compare. So that's a beam resting on this girder. See, we're representing it as a force vector. So the location of beam A is right here is a distance little uh, small uh, lowercase a from. So the wall C, right? So that's, I need, it's important I know where my points of application are. So basically, if I look at this thing, I know this beam is going to deflect like this. That's very exaggerated, right? So by finding this R in this X bar, that will, the beam will deflect the same. Okay, so this is out of your, out of your book. <laughs> okay, and I didn't, all right, so let's do an example. We are going to do example 2.22 2 on page 60 of your textbook. It says determine the single result in R magnitude and location that would produce an equivalent effect as the force shown on the combined footing. Okay. All right, so let's do that. All right, so I'm going to draw out this diagram here. So we have, I'm going to use black here. Fortunately, I don't have a, uh, let's erase that. All right. 
I'll kind of draw it in 3D here, 3D the best I can. So we have a force here. All right. So what they call this thing? Okay. This is a um, this is a grade beam. Okay. So we could have two columns connected together. So we have 20 kips here. So I recommend that you look at at the uh, uh, diagram as you're doing as I'm doing this problem this is 60 kips here okay and the distance between the two is 12 feet okay and I do believe they call this point a sorry for the rude sketch but it's crude but you get the point all right so I want to find the equivalent point the equivalent result in force. So, step one, sum of the forces in the y direction equals r. We need to find r. Okay, so let's look at our senses here. They're both pointing down to the negative, right? So we have negative 20 kips plus a negative 60 kips, right? So our resultant is negative 80 kips. It's important that I know this sign. This equals R, okay? Now, what we wanna do is we wanna sum the moments about a point. So do we want, we can go about point A and point B. It does not matter. Okay, so let's sum the moments about point A first. Okay, so if we sum the moments about point A, the line of action of the 20 kip force doesn't that go through the point of application. So that means there's no perpendicular distance. So that moment is zero. So that one is zero. So we don't even have to worry about that. The 60 kip force, okay is going clockwise, so that's a negative 60 kips times my perpendicular distance, okay? So remember, perpendicular distance, right? Right there, 12 feet from the line of action. See what I did? It doesn't matter how I measure this 12 feet. I can measure it there, there, okay? This is 12 feet. Line of action times 12 feet. And what does that equal? Uh, I gotta find my calculator. Just give me a second, please. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so 60 times 12, I should be able to do that in my head. So that's a negative 60, right? Because it's a negative rotation and going clockwise. 60 times 12, that is a negative 720 kip feet. Okay, so now what I want to do is I actually want to sum the moments about B because I'm going to show you what happens at the end here. Sum the moments about point B. So now we know the 60 kip, the line of action of the 60 kip force is going through the point of rotation. So we have zero moment because there's no perpendicular distance. Now the 20 kip force is going counterclockwise. So that's a positive rotation. So that's 20 kips. And the distance between the two is 12 feet. So 20 times 12 is 240 kips feet 240 kip times feet okay all right so now so this was step two okay so i have a negative and a positive it's important that i keep these numbers step three is x bar equals the sum of the moments divided by the resultant in the y direction. Okay, so 
Remember me talking about how important this is right here? What is that telling me? Remember, that is telling me where I'm rotating about. All right, so with that, if I use A, oops, so sum of the moments about A is negative 720 kips, kip feet, sorry, kip feet, divided by negative R is negative 80 kips. The kips cancel out and I'm left with feet. A negative number divided by a negative number becomes a positive number. Divided by 80. So that equals 9, a positive 9 feet. Now what does that tell me? It comes positive. It's telling me because, look at this, it is 9 feet to the right of point A because that's where I sum my moment about. To the right. Right is positive. So if I had a negative number, that would be to the left. So let's do that for point B. So x bar equals sum of the moments about point B divided by R equals 240 kip feet divided by negative 80 kips. The kips cancel out. 240 divided by 80. Now I'm left with 3 feet. A negative 3 feet. Two, so I have a negative. So that means I am going 3 feet to the left of B. So when I look at this, I'm just going to draw. Here's that footing. Here's the little footing. Here's the other big footing. So here's right the distance between these two are 12 feet so it doesn't so reason why i did this is that you should get the same answer this the resultant sh uh, not the same answer but the resultant should be in the same point so nine feet to the right of point a so this is point a right so that's right about there or three feet to the left of point b I end up in the same spot and my magnitude is 80 kips. So now that's how I just resolve my forces into of a non-concurrent force system into one in one resultant force. So kind of kind of a neat little thing. So work that problem both ways. So the key again the key is right here. Where I'm summing my moments from is where I'm measuring from. And if I have a negative, I'm going to the left, right? A negative direction, number negative in the coordinate system. And if I'm going to, if it's a positive number, I'm going to the right. Okay. All right. So, doesn't look like I needed this page. All right. Your book didn't really talk about distributed loads um, too well. Okay, so I wanted to go over these. Um, so this is out of my out of the statics book here. So basically, if I look at this load here, this is called a, a uniform right here. This is called a uniform distributed line load. So that can be represent a snow a snow load. So basically, when I look at the see all these tiny little force vectors, it's telling me that for every foot there's a 60 pound sandbag on it 60 60 60 60 60 60 60 60 60 60 okay so that is in the shape of a rectangle so to turn that into a a point load which makes our life easy is we can we know the area of a rectangle is length 8 feet times height so this little these tiny little arrows represent the height and W they call this a, a distributed load is 60 so to my height of my rectangle is 60 so if I take 60 pounds per foot times 8 feet the feet cancel out I'm left with 480 pounds and I know and as a rectangle the centroid 
is halfway in the middle. That's just something, and we'll, we'll discuss this more in detail later. I just wanted to, to mention that to you. So if you see a problem, okay? So this is, we, we want to be able to break this, this distributed load. This is uniform because it's the same height into a point load to be able to solve it um, with statics, okay? Sorry, this is a little messy. All right, now this is a non-uniform distributed load is a triangle okay that could be a snow drift right so when we look at a triangle we have a height a base and a length okay so the resultant we know the resultant is a third from where the two legs form a 90 degree angle right there so it's a third in, so a third of L, okay? So looking at that, so this would be, let's say this is a hundred pounds per foot, okay? And then we have zero there. So one half W, right? W is the load intensity right here. That is my height, okay? So if I take one half, times 100, let's say this is a length of 10 feet, times 10 feet, so that is, so 100 times 10 is 1,000, divided by 2 is 500 pounds. So that would be my resultant, and my resultant is from here to there, so it's 500 pounds, and I know it's this distance is 10 divided by 3, right? A third. Okay. Uniform, rectangle, non-uniform, triangular. So just some simple cases here. So if you go, get, go on and get your four-year degree, we can actually do calculus and integrate the area underneath the curve. And you do not want to do calculus in this class, trust me. Okay, so just wanted to bring the bring this up, this that, because this will help you in the, later in the semester. All right, so with that, let's determine the resultant force of this parallel force system. Are these parallel and they're not concurrent? Right. This is a triangular distributed load, non non uniform distributed load. This is a rectangular uniform distributed load okay so and then we have this point load is acting right down there so step one is we want to convert distributed loads into point loads okay so this so ignore this this is out of your statics my statics book so you do not have that and ignore this here so I just wanted to throw this extra example in here okay so all right triangle here what's let's, let's figure out Let's figure out this guy, and let's figure out this guy, okay? So A, B. A equals one half, area of a triangle, one half, okay, base times height. So it's six meters long, and my height, or my W, is seven kilonewtons per meter and that equals so six times seven divided by two and that equals 21 kilonewtons so point a is 21 kilonewtons okay converting this uniform distributed load into a point load 
So is base times height. So the length is 5 meters right here. From there to there is 5 meters times my height is 3 kilonewtons per meter. And that equals 15 kilonewtons. Remember, the meters cancel out. So this is 15 kilonewtons. Now, remember my dimensions. Okay. So from here to there, remember, this is my 90 degree angle. So it's a third L from this point to this point, but this is two thirds L, right? So two thirds. So if I just, so if I take six over one times two thirds, because this is my L term, and then what do I get? I get 12 thirds, which equals four meters. So it's four meters from there, or a third, six divided by three is two, or two meters from there to there. Okay, and now I know this is two and a half meters, because in a rectangle, it's always midpoint, two and a half meters, because it's five meters long. Now I have my distances. So that's the first step, okay? So step two, now we're gonna sum all my forces in the y direction, and that will equal my resultant force, okay? So that equals, go from left to right, like I'm reading a book, minus 21 kilonewtons. So this negative is, because I'm not doing a moment, I am just doing a force. My sense is these are all pointing down in a negative y direction. So that is a negative plus a negative 15 kilonewtons plus a negative 10 kilonewtons. And that equals 21 plus 15 plus 10. That equals a negative 46 kilonewtons. That equals my resultant, magnitude of my resultant, the big R, okay? So let's go to the next page. All right, so now we have to sum the moments. So I'm gonna go back and forth. Sum the moments, step three. Sum the moments. Oops, I don't need to write it that big. We're gonna sum, whoa, my finger got in the way there. Sorry about that. Some of the moments. Now, what point do we want to go about? So obviously we have to go about this point because we don't know a distance to this point. So we're going to call that point A. So if there's not a point, just identify a point. Point A equals, okay? So if I look here, would you agree that all of these all these forces are going rotating clockwise around my point A right here. Would you agree with that? So that means that it is a negative rotation. Because remember, I look at my sense, I connect a screen, and I let go of this. The force is pushing it down, so it wants to rotate clockwise. So they're all negative rotations. Okay. So with that, so my first moment is 21 kilonewtons. Okay, and my distance is four meters plus three meters, right? Because it's four meters from here to the end of my triangle. Plus I gotta go three meters all the way to point A. So that's seven meters. So 21 kilonewtons. That's a negative rotation minus 21 kilonewtons times seven meters, okay? Okay, 15 kilonewtons. So we, we got three plus six is nine. That gets me to here. Plus two and a half is 11 and a half meters all the way to point A. Okay, so minus 15 kilonewtons times 11.5 meters. 
Okay, and then, oops, and we do not want to forget this little 10 kilonewtons. So that is 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 3 is 14. So 10 kilonewtons. I'm going to just put that right down here. Minus 10 kilonewtons. The, again, the negative because it's a rotate, the negative rotation about point A. Because, right, this way is positive. Times, so 11 times 14 meters. Okay, so if we add all those up, it becomes a negative moment. 21 times 7 plus 15 times 11.5 plus 10 times 14 I get a negative 459.5 kilonewton meters is my sum of the moments about point A okay. so now step 4 is we need to find x bar. So that equals the sum of the moments about point A divided by R, and that equals minus 459.5 okay, kilonewton meters divided by, so my R was, where's my R? Minus 46 kilonewtons. Okay. divided by 46, I get 9.99 meters. Positive, right? A negative divided by a negative equals 9.99 meters to right of A because it's positive. Because remember, what is my moments about? Point A, so to right of A. So what is that telling me? My resultant force, um, let's see, 9.99. So this is 9. So right about here, this is my big R. Okay, that is 46 kilonewtons. And then my X bar is 9.99. So if I take 46 times 9.99, it should equal this answer. It's, I know it seems like a ridiculous check, but just in case you didn't, you entered your calculator in wrong. You know, you never know when you enter eight numbers in. So basically, what does that do? That replaces this, this, and this. That, now I know where the point of application is 9.99 meters. Remember, that's what we're trying to find. That's what X bar is, is the point of application. Right here, 9.99 meters to the right of A. My line of action is 90 degrees from horizontal. Okay. My magnitude is 40, 46 degrees kilo, um, kilonewtons and my sense is self. There's the four characteristics of my force, okay? All right, with that, um, we don't want to do that, so I forgot to change this. So we're going to read, so it's going to flip this over here. I have it all marked up here. You're going to read pages 59 and 60. 59 and 60 of textbook. And then you're going to do problems. So make sure you go over that example 2.22 on page 60. And then your problems, your homework problems, what I want you to do are, so I'm just gonna delete this out of here. Problems. 2.2.51 comma 
and 2.53 on page, whoops, on page 91 of textbook. Okay, so fairly simple concept, but it's important you understand why I need to do this. Okay, so with that, that is the end of this presentation, and thank you for your attention.